Traders, how are you with Marcello? Today we're doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week. This week we have pretty good economic news. We have some news on the health front as well with Switzerland actually banning mammograms. If you don't know what a mammogram is, it's when they, you know, they they squeeze the the delicious parts of a woman to detect cancer. And we also have much better news when it comes to gold and silver. Let's go ahead and get started. Overall for the week, markets in the U.S. mostly positive, including Canada. There was a there's pretty good inflation reports, but in addition, in addition to that, there's good news around the world when it comes to corporate earnings, which actually recovered last uh, last quarter, which was the three months ending in September. According to Goldman Sachs, David Kostin, Goldman Sachs being one of the most important financial entities, not only in the U.S., but the world, he's saying that the S&P 500 quarter three earnings have proven to be resilient and growing for the first time in the last year. So, again, when the Federal Reserve comes around, the central bank in the United States and decides, well, what are we going to do with interest rates, right? Is the economy doing well or not? What are they going to do? They're going to start looking at all this data. And if they see the earnings of companies doing well, that means that, quote unquote, the economy is doing well, quote unquote, which means that that gives them more room to actually increase rates. Now, the last few weeks, there's been some indications that maybe they're not going to do that, which is part of the reasons that the, the exchange, the stocks have been going up. But we'll see what they actually decide to do. Switzerland is banning mammograms, and I'm going to read this directly from the article. This is actually from a, a health board in Switzerland. Systemic review existing literature allowed the board to conclude effectiveness of mammograms still uncertain. Overdiagnosis false positive tests cause harm, and screening programs have had an unfavorable cost-effective ratio. This is uh, another thing that I think, for example, of chemotherapy, where, you know, you get cancer, you know, they tell you go get chemo, and literally it's like a 99% fail rate. It's like they just want to take your money before you die. See what I'm saying? Conspiracy Martello. Latin America. Most of the most of the stocks there are pretty positive. The only exception was the Merval in Argentina. They actually have elections today to be able to choose whether they're going to continue with the Communist Republic of Argentina, as I always joke around in the Spanish videos, or they're going to get a little capitalism in their life, get a little freedom, a little, a little bit of money. Africa and the Middle East, uh, mostly positive as well. South Africa was the biggest winner there. And then in the far, far east, Asia, Australia, we have Taiwan being the most positive at 3.15%. Crypto news, not a lot of news in the crypto space other than the fact that the fourth largest bank in Germany, Commerce Bank, has been granted a crypto custody license. And Bitcoin for the week, positive, or excuse me, it was down 1.88% to 36,422. That's as of Saturday, by the way. So it's probably going to be a little bit different when you watch the video. Commodities. One of the they did a study in Texas uh, hiding or finding the hidden cost of fueling EVs and whether it actually outweighs the upfront cost of gas. And they found that fueling electric vehicles cost roughly seventeen dollars a gallon. One of the things I think is interesting also, and you should do your own research on this, go and look at a lithium mine or a cobalt mine, which is all that stuff that goes into your batteries, including your cell phone batteries. And look at the difference with an uh, an oil rig, just a hole that goes into the earth every once in a while. Obviously, yeah, there's oil spills and stuff, but those mines and lithium don't look very safe for the environment. But you know, we're gonna we're gonna protect the environment, so we're gonna destroy it. So it's okay, but, you know, that's how they. Anyway, Rolex and Patek prices are at a two year low now that even rich people are stopping uh stopping spending money as much as before. And UF, U.S. beef prices hit a record high as the nation's capital, the nation's herd cattle, the cattle, uh, the amount of cattle is going to reach its smallest since 1962. They're expecting to continue to shrink since 2025. I'd like to remind you that the WEF and all the elites want you to eat, eat you know, grasshoppers and, and insects for protein. Meanwhile, they're still flying around their private jets to save the environment. Because, you know, it's okay if they do it. 
the WEF, the World Economic Forum, even talked about making people allergic to meat. There's a... Um, I forgot the article that I read, but there's a um, there's a there's a guy from the WF. He was talking about how there's a there's a tick or something that bites people that changes their makeup that makes them allergic to meat, and they actually want to force people to take this or give it to people in a way where it's going to make everybody allergic to meat because you know save the environment. Crude is down in the U.S. one point six eight percent to seventy five eighty nine. Brent, the U international version, is down one point zero one percent to eighty sixty one. And twelve years ago, this is really interesting. A Wall Street banker named Randall Atkins, the son of an oil tycoon named Oren Atkins, bought an old coal mine, coil, an old coal mine for two million dollars, site unseen in Wyoming. Thought it might be able to eke out a profit. Now he has found out there's a $37 billion treasure, which now this mine can be the largest rare earth metals mine in the entire United States. It's the biggest one that it was found since 1952. This is really important because rare earth minerals like gallium and germanium are in the vital production of superconductors and also needed to power electric vehicles. And most people don't know that China has an absolute dominance in these markets where we close the mines because of the environment, whereas China doesn't really care about the environment. So they they continue to, you know, they're in Africa even doing the mines and stuff. And so they can show the, the majority of that. So if there ever is a war between the United States and China, the China can simply get, uh, you know, they're just going to say, you know, no, no, no more rare earth metals for you because we need them for our military as well. Another thing that was really interesting with China is the fact that they're they're starting up two coal plants per week six times more than the rest of the world. So when they tell you, you have to stop driving and you have to stop eating meat, you know, kind of look at what's happening overall because it kind of seems like what they're doing is they're trying to bring down Europe and the U.S. with all these environmental policies where China and India, they don't really care. What they care is about progress and helping their people. So it kind of seems like they're they're pushing down the West to be able to bring up the East, so to speak. But, you know, what do I know? It's just a conspiracy. Gold is trending steadily upward due to the investors concerned about the geopolitical and economic instability. For the week, gold went up 2.21% to 1982.70, while silver went up over 2% to 2282, still relatively cheap. And financial and banking news, Moody's, which is um, a I just throw out the Spanish word. They the it's a it's an entity that cal, cal califies no calificar is the Spanish word. They basically give you give corporations and also companies a a grade about how good the debt is, and they just drop the credit rating of the United States to negative from stable due to the fact that we had these huge fiscal deficits and a decline in debt affordability. One of the things that's interesting is, is in the last administration, Trump actually wanted to refinance all the debt for 100 years at 2 or 3%, the lowest rates that we've had in history. But no, 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 no. He says, he says bad things in Twitter. Can't do that. Japanese yen hovering over hovering near 15 year lows against the euro on Tuesday. It's even at a one year low against the US dollar. And the US October inflation is flat from the previous month, providing hopeful signs uh, that high prices are starting to come down, supposedly. Because remember, they, they tell us that it's at three, four, five percent, but remember the five guy story, right? In actuality, food, for example, which they don't measure in these inflation numbers, has actually gone up. 50, 60, 70% over the last year. Swiss banking giant UBS is expecting the Fed to cut rates starting in 2024 by 275 basis points. They expect the U.S. to enter into a recession next year. And this is also almost four times the amount where the analyst, the consensus is that, that the U.S. is going to decrease rates. UK inflation fell sharply to 4.6% from 6.7 in the previous month, reaching a two-year low. Even in the UK, remember, it's not actually 4 or 6%. Political news, things in Chicago are so bad that even the Venezuelan illegals are fleeing back to Venezuela. New York's governor are collecting data from social media companies to monitor hate speech. Remember that the party that is doing the censoring and the monitoring generally wasn't on the right side of history. Communists in New York. 
China is building two coal plants a week, as I mentioned to you guys, six more than the west of the world combined. That isn't it doesn't even include India because India is opening up a coal plant almost every week as well. New York appeals court lists the gag order on President Trump, citing constitutional free rights. So now he can talk all that smack. U.S. Army is removing the thing in your arm, the the you know the from the pandemic. I don't want to say it because then they'll ban this channel too. They're removing the requirements of having the thing of your arm from the pandemic due to the fact that the army has a historic low in recruitment since 1973. And one million people across Spain are protesting due to the situation in Spain. The socialist prime minister, Pedro Sanchez, is uh, made a deal to grant immunity to Catalan separatists. So it's illegal to go independent in Spain. And now they're making an agreement to forgive these people. That way he can stay in power. Sounds like a true socialist thing to do. Economic news, the Eurozone GDP contracted by 0.1% quarter over quarter in the three months ending in September. So the economy in Europe isn't doing as well at all. And the employment, however, across the 20 member European Union rose by 0.3%. So even though the economy is starting to stagnate a little bit, there's good numbers on the employment front. Germany hold builders are facing a downward construction spiral. Now that high house prices are down 10%, raw materials have spiked 40%, far more than during the pandemic, and it's the largest price surge in Europe. The number of even building permits in Germany have sunk far more rapidly in the region as a whole. And in October, 22.2% of the firms canceled projects, which is the most since 1991. So Germany doesn't seem to be doing very well. Remember, Germany is the fourth largest economy in the world, soon to be the third, overtaking Japan, and still the largest economy in, in, in Europe. Chinese home prices fell by the most in eight years in October. The property slump in China continues, even though the government of China has been trying to prop it up with some subsidies and new homes and prices in 70 cities, including the state housing, the state subsidized housing has declined 0.38%, the most since February 2015. Corporate news, Elon Musk's SpaceX launches the falcon heavy they had a little bit of an accident though but it was great to see that they actually got off the ground with it one of the cool things that i've seen about this is that soon instead of sending ships through the water what they're going to be able to do is literally send anything around the world in basically two hours so can you imagine you know you fly to new york or wherever the port is going to be maybe miami and you go to one of these starships you arrive in france in two hours and you go have breakfast and come back the same day can you imagine how cool that would be uh, open ai is in a bit of chaos they fired the board fired sam altman and all the employees said that unless the board resigns all of them and reinstates sam altman that they're gonna all decide to go ahead and quit so there's a little bit of a problem going on there maybe they're having a little bit of a problem competing with grok which is elon musk's new ai Citigroup plans to announce major layoffs, tens of thousands at risk of being eliminated from the bank. Citigroup still remembers one of the largest banks in the world. And Tesla went up over 4% after they revealed updated terms of their Cybertruck agreements and so they're going to start selling them. People are not going to be allowed to sell a vehicle within the first year without permission from Tesla. And buyers could face legal challenges in addition to Tesla refusing to sell them cars in the future. Walmart is down over 8% after they provided disappointing guidance. The total revenue is up 5.2% at just over $160 billion. Same store sales went up 4.7%, but the CFO, John Riley, or excuse me, David Riley, said that he's now cautious on the consumer. So you can see, even though we have quote unquote all of these news, it seems like the consumer now is starting to pull back in the United States due to the situation with inflation in addition to the the costs of everything going up. There's two different things. It's the inflation, which obviously makes prices go up, but there's also the interest rates, which increases prices as well. So if, if consumers decide to pull back, then it's a big problem due to the fact that almost 70% of the economy in the United States is consumer spending. Disney rose over 3% after Deutsche Bank is confident that their growth is going to continue in 2024 and 25. And Burberry, the poopy clothing line brand, dropped over 9% after that they might miss their annual forecast, revenue forecast, due to the global spending slowdown. So even rich people 
are starting to pull back. And I, I don't think if I, I mentioned this, if I didn't, even the prices of Rolexes and Pateks are down to their lowest point in the last two years. Trade news. Singapore's non-oil domestic exports continue to slump in October. It's the 13th month that it's down. This is a big piece of news because Singapore is actually the second largest port in the world. So they take all those goods from Asia and then bring them over here to the West and Latin America and everything. The decline in October may have been driven by key markets in Taiwan, the U.S. and South Korea. So you can see how, you know, Germany starting to have a problem. China starting to have a problem. Now we have the second largest port in the world starting to slow down quite a bit. So that tells you what direction we're headed with the overall economy. Technology, Lockheed Martin has handed a contract to work on a nuclear-powered spacecraft due to the fact that NASA wants to be able to go ahead and use the technology in space and turn it on in space as well. And foreign investors pulled out record amount of money in U.S. equities that track Saudi Arabia in October. They pulled out 20% of the fund, or $200 million, due to this uncertainty in the Middle East with Israel and Gaza. In international events, Iceland declared, declared a state of emergency after a town called Grindavik had thousands of earthquakes, and there's literally the, the ground in the city just literally split like that. And that's not a good thing in my opinion because Iceland actually sits right in the middle of the tectonic plate from the, the right, which is Europe and Africa, and then the left, which is the United... I might be saying it backwards here, but showing you backwards, but... You know, that, that Atlantic rift is literally where the plates connect. And if that starts going off, that, that could cause a lot of problems. Archaeologists and interesting facts found a pyramid structure in Kazakhstan, which is Central Asia, thought to be over 3,000 years old. One of the things I found to be fascinating is if you think about the culture that we have today, if somebody, you know, if we all kind of died because of an asteroid or whatever, and then they came back and they saw all these same size skyscrapers around the world, these, you know, rectangular or square skyscrapers going up. You would think there was some kind of civilization around the world because they all have similar building practices. And that's what I think about the pyramids. It's in Mexico. It's in Colombia. It's in, uh, obviously, Egypt. You have them in Asia. It's kind of like there was actually a civilization all around the world. And I recommend you guys watch the, the Graham Hancock series in Netflix called uh, Something Apocalypse. Really good. Covers a lot of this stuff. And Alaska's largest city, city declares a snow emergency after a record amount of rainfall. 65 inches of snow came down, 165 centimeters in less than 24 hours. Closed roads, schools are closed, and it led to power outages as well. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, the preppers were right. Oh.